Blair, and welcome to the Loaf of Bread GA podcast, slicing into the GA of the past, present, and future. Join me, Jason Keelan, as we cut into the largest loaf of bread known to mankind. Hello, Diagwitch, Bonjour, Nihau, Konnichiwa, Guten Tag, and Privyat to you all wherever you're listening in. What started as a message to 10 clubs has now expanded to more than 50 clubs globally from all continents. The journey through Loaf 2 GA Global continues this week as we move on to our next destination in the GA world. So come with me on the GA journey of a lifetime and meet clubs from Canada to Argentina, South Africa to Gibraltar, Bermuda to the North Pole, New Zealand to Kuwait, Knoxville to Qatar and literally everywhere in between. So grab the passports, grab the bags, it's time to go. Hola amigos and amigos and welcome to Catalonia. On slice 16, we move from one Spanish speaking area to another as we travel from Argentina to sunny Spain and catch up with the guys at Barcelona Gales GEA. I meet the man himself Max from Stuttgart via Car Savine and Danica who has landed herself in the Spanish sun via Australia. We talk all about the life in the GEA in Spain, rivalries at the likes of Madrid Harps, Zaragoza, Valencia and others, Danica's sporting background transferring to the GEA. Green gardening gloves and goals, Jack O'Connor being Max's school manager, the future of the game in Barcelona, and some of the key issues, Rafael Nadal or David Clifford, Paella or Irish stew, and the ultimate Sangria, Guinness or Australia's finest beer. But first as usual, let's take a trip to the city of Barcelona and see what it has to offer us. Bon Sultos. As we arrive in northeastern Spain, we meet the beautiful Barcelona in the region known as Catalonia, facing onto the Mediterranean Sea. This autonomous region is home to near 8 million people. The region had been autonomous in the pre-Spanish Civil War years, only for the likes of General Franco and Co. to take it away. With Franco's death came new life in the region, and the 1978 constitution granted the autonomy once again. But it was in 2014 when things changed. A regional election was won unexpectedly by the separatist group who wanted full independence. Three years later, they held a full independence referendum which was outlawed by the Spanish government. Things turned ugly soon after as Spanish police began violent attacks on the pro-independent supporters and arresting political leaders in the area. Catalan president Carlos Puigdemont fled the country. As for Barcelona itself, the name comes from an old inscription on a coin with Iberian writing. The other plausible theory is that it is linked to the Barca family from the early BC centuries. Many would be familiar with the name Hannibal from history, who crossed the Alps on his elephants. The city went through the periods of Roman rule, Arabic conquering, and up to the modern day monarchic rulings. Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand in 1469 brought the opposing royal lines together as one. They would also be the ones who would sponsor the boats for a certain Christopher Columbus to go exploring, and we all know how that turned out. In recent times, the city of Barcelona has held the likes of the 1992 Summer Olympics, where one Irishman, Michael Carruth, brought the Irish out of their seats. Michael Carruth is the champion of the Olympic Games! Michael Carruth is the champion, the champion, the champion! The hosting of the Games is said to be the catalyst for the city's growth, moving from a primarily industrial coastal region to one filled with tourist prospects. Among those today would be the likes of Costa Brava, famous tapas and wine from the region, day trips to nearby Andorra and France, and of course the main attraction, the Sagrada Familia. The Sagrada Familia, Basilica of the Holy Father, is a still unfinished church designed by Antony Gaudi. Today it is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Construction began in 1882, in the hope of combining the famous Gothic architecture with modern ideas. Issues such as the Civil War, World War II, destruction, COVID-19 and others have slowed the project down ever further. The 18 spires planned were to represent the 12 apostles, 4 evangelists, Mary and the tallest one to be Jesus. But the detail in the close-up aspects of the facades and the interior are quite insane and really need to be seen to be believed. On the sporting side, it's impossible not to mention Barcelona FC one of the two main giants of Spanish and world football alongside the capital team of royalty, Real Madrid. The famous Blaugrana play their games at the iconic Camp Nou in the city. The club began in 1899 
as a team started by a mix of English, Spanish and Swiss men, have since grown to become a world powerhouse worth in excess of $4 billion. With 74 domestic trophies, 20 worldwide titles and 12 notable Ballon d'Or winners, they are the most successful in the country. Add to that the fact that they have never been relegated in 92 seasons and you have something quite astonishing. But it is worth noting that FC Barcelona is not just soccer. The umbrella team takes in the likes of men's and women's soccer, basketball, wheelchair basketball, hockey, rugby and futsal among others. The Camp Nou was designed in 1954 after the original Le Cor was deemed too small at the time. The first game at the new ground was in 1957 against the Warsaw Select 11 team with the first ever goal scored by Paraguay number 7, Eulogio Martinez. Ironically, their first defeat was against Real Madrid, but by 2014, the club had recorded an amazing 1,000 wins at home. So for the 99,000 fans each week who get to come, it is quite the experience. Perhaps their most famous visitor was former international goalkeeper, Pope John Paul II, who celebrated Mass in the stadium during his visit. Some of the endless list of names from the club's history include Cruyff, Ronaldinho, Romario, Ronaldo, Iniesta and Xavi, Maradona, Koeman, Guardiola, Puyol, Neymar, Stoichkov, Laudrup. The list is practically endless, but one name which has become iconic and a household name around the world in recent times is this man. Alba inside! It's Messi! But another name which resonates still today with Barcelona fans is actually a man who was born next to Jones's Road and Crow Park in Dublin, a man by the name of Patrick O'Connell. O'Connell worked as a kid in 1901 at the famed Boland's Mill in the city, while also playing soccer for the likes of Liffey Wanderers before moving across the water to Sheffield Wednesday. His career would soon bring him to Manchester United, the first Irishman ever to play for the club. After his career ended, O'Connell shook off the issues of the famous 1915 betting scandal and took over in Spain at Racing Santander, helping them win five titles and involving them in the founding of La Liga in 1928. He then took Real Betis to their only title in 1935 before the growing world giants Barcelona came knocking for the Dubliner. He took the team on various adventures, but perhaps the best known of those is the North America Tour of 1937. After games against the likes of Brooklyn St. Mary's Celtics in the USA and Club America in Mexico, O'Connell's 16 players that travelled came back simply as four, as the rest decided to stay and make a life in their newfound lands. Despite the lack of a squad, O'Connell then went on to lead Barcelona to the local Liga Catalunya and Campionat. Sadly, O'Connell died penniless and buried in an unmarked grave in North London in 1959. But in modern times, a fund to raise money for a headstone and memorials paid off and a bust of St. Connell was designed outside the home of Sevilla FC, a team he also managed. The Barcelona Gales was founded in 2001 by Irishman Finbar Barrett, who previously managed Paris Gales. The club continues to grow from the hosting of its first tournament involving Den Haag of the Netherlands and Barnstown from Wexford. With the growing number of teams in Spain and the continent, competition has grown considerably. Rivals Madrid Harps provide a sense of an El Gasico, and the most recent tournament win over their rivals in 2020 by the men's side showed the progress there is, and the future is well and truly bright for Barcelona Gales GEA club. We also wish the club all the best as they have their 20th anniversary this year also. So let's get to Barcelona and chat to my new friends Max and Danica and find out all about Barcelona Gales GEA club. Hi. Hey Max, how are you? How are you doing, Jason? Not too bad. Good, good stuff, good stuff. How are you keeping? Ah, sure, I'm grand. What would be wrong? Apart from the weather and everything else, but your luck. <laughs> I'll have to call out to Barcelona. The weather here is fine now. Yeah, I'd say it's all right. Yeah, I, I imagine it wouldn't be too bad. Yeah. <laughs> it was there. For last week, geez, we had thunderstorms and everything, and it was snowing in some parts. Yeah, but April. All right. Okay, We're here now well. with 20-something degrees, and it's lovely, so... <laughs> Oh, my heart breaks for you out there, yeah. Home, so we're, we're fine weather footballers now. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Where about you from originally? Or? I, I'm actually, I was born in Germany, but um, I grew up in Kerry, so... What part of Kerry did you grow uh, up in? Or? I lived in, in Karsavin. Oh, yeah. Where about in Germany were you born? I was born in, near, um, on the border of Bayern and Baden-Württemberg. It's near, near enough Stuttgart, if you know where Stuttgart oh, yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so but I was born to German parents, and they, they're a little bit mad ahead, so they emigrated to... 
to Southwest Kerry <laughs> when I was when I was a young lad and I picked up a bit of football there and yeah sure that's it here I am now in Barcelona <laughs> did you did you play much when you were in uh, when you were in Kerry then yeah yeah I played all the way through the ranks when I was when I was when I was playing over there with St Michael's Falmore uh, oh yeah 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 and um played under 12s under under 16s minor I played wow. minor for Kerry yeah. then in 2009 really wow yeah What's your uh, What's your uh, second name? Do you mind me asking her? Kiman. I'll put it here for you. Look, uh, it's a German second name. I sure I'll change it. One second. I can, oh yeah, there we go. Rename. Kiman. Kiman. Max Kiman. It's very German. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Max Kiman. What position were you playing on the Kerry team then? Or I was midfield. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I was Kerry. Midfield, yeah. yeah, Kerry. That's a pretty like vital yeah, thing. That, Kerry. That yeah, that was the year because we did. Um, we did really well that year in the school. We won the home cup with uh, the Klaus and Skellige in 2009. So wow. about, eight, about eight of our panel made the Kerry Miners that year then. That's nice, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I had a, I had, a, I had um, Owen Fitzgerald on the pod uh, a few weeks back. He was the cornerback slash fullback on the Kerry under-20 All-Ireland winning team the past couple of years. So he's, as I called him, I referred to him as the next Seamus Moynihan, which... Uh, which he thinks is hilarious. Yeah. So uh, he's from a little village called Ginnagulla, which I, I'm sure you've heard of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Max, Max so team. Yeah, anyway. yeah, sure. Look, anyone, anyone who's, uh, who's stupid enough to come out, I suppose I'll talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> ah, bit of crack. Hi, Danica. How are you? Hi, Danica. Yeah. Hello. Good. Yeah. How are you guys? Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, whereabouts are you in Barcelona? Are you in Barcelona at the moment, Danica? Yeah. 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 I'm here. It must it must be tough being in what you say it is max twenty something degrees is it? We have twenty four where I am at the moment, but I'm I'm outside the city. I'm in the sticks altogether. I'm out in the small old village, and Danica's in the city. So where what village are you in? It's, it's called La Pobla de Claramun. It's about do you know the mountains of Montserrat? They're near yeah. Barcelona. It's yeah, mountain, so it's near that. Like yeah, it'd be near near oh. that. Oh, class. Yeah. yeah, I've been in Spain yeah, a good so few that. times. All right. Um, Typical Irish, the boat's right our flight, but we did go, we did fly to um, Santander and drove uh, to Malaga. So, oh, we, yeah, that's, it, a, nice. that's a nice whole journey. It was the length top to bottom of the country, yeah, but it was, it was class. We went into like Leon and all these other, you know, cool places that not a lot that's, of people would go to, yeah. So, I loved it. There's like the, the Spanish Route 66, I think that's known as, isn't it? Is it? I didn't know. From Santander to Malaga, yeah. There's a part yeah. of it known as the Spanish Route 66, yeah. Oh, no one told me that on the way anyway, but <laughs> it was still pretty nice. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> yeah. Danica, where, uh, where about you from originally? I'm from Australia. All right, what part? Uh, Wollongong. It's oh, yeah. south of Sydney. On the coast. Yeah, yeah I've yeah. been there, yeah. Yeah, uh, it was in Australia. Yeah, 2012. We were in Australia. We okay. went, um, started in Kearns, Darwin and Kearns, and then worked our way down the coast and finished off with my relations in Adelaide and then went back to Sydney and then flew to South America. So, yeah, we've we've kind of looped around. Nice. Uh, we've gotten around this. anyway, Jason. Yeah. Uh, so you yeah. would have done like the America, whole... Spain, what next? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, Danica, what brought <laughs> you to, uh, to Barcelona? Um, so I originally lived in Seville, um, oh, yeah. I was there for about five or six years and actually was in Granada for a year before that as well, oh. studying. Um, and yeah, I got offered a job here almost two years ago. Um, so yeah, I moved up here. Awesome. Yeah. My memories of Seville, awesome. unfortunately, are, are shocking. Um, I never actually saw Seville. I, I was sick in an Airbnb. Oh, I don't think I, no, oh, not, I, just, I don't, I don't really even drink like that much at all, but it was just, I was so sick. I couldn't get out of the bed. So Seville is just like, I saw the main street and back to the airport. I think that was it. So yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. You'll have yeah. to go again. It's yeah, beautiful. I think I will. Yeah. Um, what got you into the, into the football and the, the GA out there, Danica? Well, um, I, I didn't play at home. Um, obviously, I knew what it was. I mean, I follow AFL, Sydney yeah. Swans fan. Oh, um, no. <laughs> grew up loving Ty Canelli. Um, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, man. Obviously, man. <laughs> <laughs> obviously knew about the international rules. So I, I had a bit of an idea about what GA was before I started playing. Um, but since I was a little kid, I always played football, soccer. Yeah. Um, and when I moved to Spain, I wanted to keep playing a team sport, but there's not really that many options for women's 
amateur team sports um, in Spain. There's a few kind of five-a-side teams and stuff in Seville. Um, I did play five-a-side for a bit in Granada, but I just couldn't really get into it. I'm more of an open field person. I like 11 aside. I like grass. I like running, um, yeah. fresh air. And yeah, I just sort of stumbled across the GAA. I think um, it would have been on Facebook or something like that. And I was a bit scared at first because I thought it was really rough, like AFL, but actually <laughs> like, this GAA is not that, is not that rough. Not it, can, it can be. It depends who you play. I mean, if you play Madrid, maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and so I just went along and started playing in Seville. Um, I played against the team here like a lot of times in tournaments. So I knew a couple of the girls already. So when I moved here, it was only natural to to join the team as well. Yeah. Did you say a minute ago Madrid or the uh, the rough team? Is that what you said? They have a certain reputation. They have a certain reputation. That's not the first time I've heard that, funnily enough. Um, you're not the first, first Spanish club on, but Madrid haven't responded to my messages yet of, sort of officially. <laughs> and uh, I'm a bit concerned that maybe now they've, Word has got out that they're rough and they're afraid to come, afraid to come on, but um, yeah. Okay. I hope they don't listen because they. I might have a target on my back after this. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we, say, uh, we, we love them. Uh, we, if you listen to them, we love you. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't really. I can tell. <laughs> uh, what was you said? You were a soccer player originally. Were you like? What was your team back in Australia? Were you like? Well, I don't know any Australian female. Alex Morgan is the kind of main footballer that I always go to when I'm thinking of the, the female game. Well, Sam Kerr is probably the most well-known. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, I would say she plays for Chelsea. She's yeah. amazing. No, I was by no means a very good footballer. I just played since I was a little kid, um, you know, the local Wollongong League. Um, yeah, the Thoreau Thunderbirds, that was the name of my team. So, yeah. Awesome. Just grew up yeah. playing that. <laughs> okay. Sounds cool, yes. And uh, Max from... Stuttgart to Kerry. <laughs> how, uh, how did the football take off in Kerry after life in Stuttgart? Well, to be honest, it was a tough enough start because I landed over, I don't know, I probably started playing GA when I was about eight years old. And then I always remember the first, like, the first couple of months of it in primary school doing, doing training and p- just picking the ball off the ground. And they're saying, off the ground, off the ground. And I'm like, what the hell are you on about? I have no idea what he's talking about. So I didn't get that. I didn't get half the rules. And then sure... They just threw me in goal. And I remember just being there with green gardening gloves in goal. And then <laughs> after a while, after a few years, I came out field then and I started playing fullback and I, I was just a big lad. So they just encouraged me to just belt people, basically. Okay. And, and that was what I was good at. So that kind of, kind of grew from there. And then we had a, a, a very good coaches around me at that time in Kerry, uh, including Jack O'Connor. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, he was our, our school manager at the time um, as well when he was training Kerry. Well, uh, so not a, not a bad name uh, I, was, have, I yeah. was very lucky with that you know I had a lot of good mm. coaches and good players around me in South Kerry so I picked it up from there and then that was basically it yeah yes and did you um, did anyone you played with you said you're on the Kerry minor panel in 09 was there any players from that that made the breakthrough that you can think of offhand uh, oh yeah there, there, yeah there's a, there's a good few players on it yeah Jack Sherwood oh I yeah on, I was on Jack, Jack Sherwood was on, who else is there now um, geez I can't remember now it's a long time ago. Um, I get back to you now if I remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's all right, yeah. <laughs> Paul I mean, Murphy, I suppose, yeah. Paul oh, Murphy. Yeah. yeah. Although okay, he was yeah. actually too small to make the minor panel that time. He was <laughs> and then oh, wow. looking now at one of the best players in the country. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, that's class. What's uh, the transfer over to Barcelona then? What's the membership in the club like at the moment for, for you? Um, to, to be honest, the last few years we've grown and grown. We've been, we've been doing really well. I remember, I'm here since 2015. Okay. And when I first landed over, you know, there were, we, we, we're struggling to get numbers of training and it's tough because it's only you getting together. Like I'm outside the city myself, so I'm about 60 kilometers away and I'm going to training. It was, it was grand, but like it's tough getting together once a week. And then when, mm. when we did, but like last year, we got a, a nice, even the last few years, we got a really nice um, atmosphere going and training. We got the numbers and it makes all the difference, you know. Yeah. So and, the uh... membership this yeah, we, we have a lot and to be honest I haven't even been to training this year because uh, I'm going now on Sunday for my first one because uh, with COVID and restrictions yeah. and the lockdown has been I'm, lo- I'm we have a county wide lockdown so we can't leave the county it was lifted last week uh, so this week is actually my first week going training since October well sounds like Ireland here with a, a county kind of lockdown thing yeah but, uh, exactly. it's pretty similar yeah um, Danica is the is the women's team then um, membership as high 
Yeah, I mean, I guess the women's team, we rely a little bit more on um, students, on, on Erasmus students. We don't have as many fixed members as the men's yeah. team, but we're trying to change it. I mean, considering the pandemic, we'll be doing okay. We have, I mean, maybe 20 to 30 pe- people turning up to training. Hello. Maybe five or six of them are women, (laughs) Um, but we train all together. Uh, I personally really like when the Erasmus students come and play because they're always really young and fit, so it gives me a break. (laughs) Well, you're making yourself both of you to be old. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I love the way you both are considering yourselves like mid fifties, and you know should be retired years ago. (laughs) Uh, What's what's the kind of? I had the intelligence to quit at the pinnacle of my career back in '09 when I discovered Guinness. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, you're probably probably not the only person ever I say to you that. So no, I say no. Yeah, what's the uh, Danica? What's the international kind of um, makeup like? As in, you've obviously you originally from Australia, and you've got some Irish as well. Is there many others? Not really, actually. In Barcelona, um, we've got maybe two or three Spanish guys that come along, um, okay. and I would say there tends to be a lot more diversity usually within the women's team because. I think there's a lot of women like me who come to Spain. They've used to playing women's sport back at home. They realize here it's not really as big um, as a lot of other countries, women's sport, and they stumble across it and then they really like it. So at the moment we have, well, there's obviously me. Um, there's an Italian girl that comes along quite a lot and also, um, yeah, Mexican. Um, in previous years, there's also been others. Well, there's a couple of Spanish girls that come along as well. who are pretty consistent. Um, back when I played in Seville, though, it was definitely a lot more Spanish than Barcelona. There was a okay. lot of Spanish players um, to the point where we actually formed a second kind of incubator team yeah. just specifically for the Spanish players to kind of train them up. And if they were good enough, they could have a run with the Irish guys in the, the first team as well. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. So you're like a... Testing out the Spanish, see if they're good enough, and then telling them, no, go home. We don't need you. You're rubbish. <laughs> a lot of them were. A lot of them were amazing. Like, especially they had experience in, you know, basketball and football, yeah. and they just combined it all together. So that's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's cool. Um, on the, I ask all the clubs, uh, Max, on the sponsorship side of things, how are things for Barcelona? Uh, we're, we're sponsored by one of the Irish pubs in Barcelona, the Michael Shocking. Collins. Shockingly. Shockingly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Michael Collins, yeah, and um, yeah, they, they they could do it sending us out a few new jerseys this year, but sure, we're yeah, happy out. We'll put the call out to them, so yeah, lads. <laughs> we're happy need out. New no, no, we, we, yeah, we've been trying over the last few years to, to run a lot of fundraisers and like things like things like the similar things like we'd have at home, race nights, um, a question of sport, like uh, doing last man standing competitions. Oh, yeah, and they've, they've kind of taken off recently as well, and you have fellas. Sending yeah. um, sending the invitations back home as well to to take part in those. So it's yeah, fair play to the. I'm not on the committee myself, but fair play to the lads who are who are organising all that because they've they've done a great job over the recent yeah. years. Yeah, you have to go down the road. We're going to do a run. Uh, yeah, go on, Danica. Sorry, we're going to do a run at the end of the month as well. Um, I saw you donated to that, Jason. So thank you. Um, yep. and usually half of it goes to Pieta House and the other half goes to the club. Um, and I guess that's only the second time we've done it. We were sort of inspired by one of our own um, teammates who last year during a lockdown, right when we were allowed to leave our houses um, for exercise, which we weren't even allowed to leave our houses to exercise for about two months, um, we could only go a kilometre from our house. So he ran a marathon just running circles around his block. So it's like maybe less than a kilometre every lap. And he ran a marathon doing that and, and raised some money. So we're kind of doing the same thing. And some of the members are going to run a marathon. Some will just run half. I'll probably only make it to 10Ks, but. <laughs> that's that's about 8K more than I would probably run at the moment. <laughs> so that's, still, that's still pretty impressive. Yeah. So, wow, that's yeah. um that's pretty amazing. Yeah. So you got Michael Collins sponsoring the Barcelona team. Probably not a sentence I expected to say out loud really in, in Irish history terms, but uh, but yeah, that's a good one. Uh, you you haven't gone out the road yet, um, Max, of getting the famous uh, Club Lotto books and selling three for a fiver at the bar to people randomly with a pen. No, no, we haven't gone down that road yet. We're missing an we're missing an owl lad to do that job for us over here. <laughs> yeah, you we're have to have an owl, an owl lad with a pint, a farmer's hat, and the racing post. Otherwise, it doesn't count. Yeah, yeah, we'll double up then, and you can sell Easter lilies as well around Easter time. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm definitely yeah. missing the Irish reference here. I'm missing the cultural reference, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically, the, the fundraising down again, a lot of Irish local small rural clubs would generally be selling weekly club lotto tickets. Uh, but they're often not sold in the way that they're, you know, traditionally kind of done in Ireland. It's often there's like a person who usually goes around annoying everybody to buy them and they catch you when you're like in the middle of the pub and you can't really say no if you're surrounded by a group and you end up buying into it and then you get haunted for it every week and you end up spending a lot yeah. of money on it. And <laughs> most people tend not to win very much on it. I've only had a couple of guests on the podcast so far have actually ever won anything. One of the girls won a sheep. That'll tell you the level of prizes. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you must it's, it's probably worth a, a good bit of money, but yeah, it's not really a prize you expect to get out of the lottery. But yeah, that's that's the Irish way um, of doing it. Especially, I'd say around mm-hmm. Car- 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 anyway, and Kerry, it would be a bi- it would be a big thing anyway. Oh yeah, well, well, the main the main sponsor of my club back home would be Dante O'Sullivan, and he he'd have it he'd have a word in when there's sheep for sale. So okay, would, I'm surprised okay. actually they haven't so, had a, a sheep as a prize back home yet. So. Yeah, well, you can you can plug that to them. So when uh, when things are finished, and uh, yeah. speaking of the the Michael Collins pub, then uh, Danica, what's the celebrations like on a on a night out after a win or drowning sorrows after defeat? I mean, I couldn't tell you. I've only had like a few months of experience before we were in lockdown. Um, yeah. Actually, we went to Madrid to play the the last tournament that we played, probably about two to three days before we were fully locked down. Um, and it's just amazing the contrast when you think about it because um, actually these these tournaments are really good team building experiences because we'll fly to another city like Madrid, we'll stay there for a couple of nights all together and um, after the tournament there's a big dinner and we all end up at the sponsor Irish pub naturally. And we won the trophy, um, just nice. putting it out there. The men's nice, team yeah. beat Madrid good. in the final. They won. <laughs> It was the only tournament of the year, so we can say that they're the reigning champions currently. Um, And so we had the trophy and we're filling it up with beer and other things, as you do, and everyone's (laughs) passing it around, drinking out of it, and two days later, we couldn't leave the house. So it's amazing the contrast of, like, (laughs) sanitary measures at the time. Okay, so (laughs) coronavirus coronavirus spread in Spain because of uh, Barcelona Gales drinking out of the cup. Okay, that's... that's it was us. It, it was, was us. definitely <laughs> it was, yeah. Okay, I don't so... think we had any cases in the club. I, I'm not sure. Not, I don't think we not have. Officially. Not officially, no. I don't think we had anyone. That, no. Not from that weekend, anyway. We'll just no, do the Irish, the Irish way. No, no, none of us have it. None of us have it. Just... None of us, no. <laughs> yeah. All riddled. We're all, all riddled, right. but none of us have riddled, it. No one, no one will have it, yeah. <laughs> Is there um is there a club? Uh, I ask all the clubs, Max. Is there a karaoke song of choice um to go with the nights out? Oh Jesus! Uh, <laughs> well, after well after whatever about karaoke, but after the after all the tournaments, we'd have you know when the porter starts flowing, we'd have a good old sing song, and I I wouldn't be able to pick out one in particular, uh, okay. but um we we always have a massive sing song. It usually it usually starts with something cheesy, and then it'll probably finish with rebel tunes at the end of the night. So. <laughs> Yeah. Although I remember one of one of our one of our legendary members who is now no longer with us. He's in America now because uh, he got married. Uh, Mark McCourt. He 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 used to be a man for the cheesy songs. So whenever everyone was there talking about the finals or whatever, he'd start blaring out something by Westlife or or yeah. But the same songs are great. Yeah. 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 Can't, and can't me go being a teacher life. now, you'd go the next day back to work and thinking of Jesus why did I sing so many songs I've no voice now I can't talk at all and yeah, yeah so a bit of a disaster but worth every second yeah so when there's free beer <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah. these poor Spanish restaurants that we book out after the tournaments they don't know what hit them like yep. we'll be getting there for dinner at seven and from seven until midnight non-stop singing the whole time and like banging on the table standing on the chairs the the waiters are like who are these people like where have they come from and even i remember one year in valencia they they told the valencia football club don't come back don't book here again oh. <laughs> like you're okay. not welcome <laughs> right. okay so you're leaving, I, that leaving was impressions place, though, yeah. that was like really small uh, it was the place was too small there was too many it was wedged like it was absolutely packed and they were completely understaffed right so yeah we were just and then you know the way Irish people when they they bring out pitchers of beer, right? Because you yeah. pay a flat price, usually pay twenty quid for dinner and free drinks, and they bring out pitchers for not having to serve people individually. But sure, like a pitcher would only last a couple of a couple of lads at a table about two or three minutes at the start. Like 
you know, you'd pour one out and neck it, and then you'd be you'd be begging for more, like, and they'd be all like, "Here, throw us more there," and they they were going nuts inside there. Yeah. Okay, but, um, to their credit, to their credit, the following year they did book an Indian buffet, and that was a hit. So <laughs> right, okay, not not something I would have expected after a, a GA night out to an Indian buffet. Yeah, but that, <laughs> it was that amazing. It was exactly yeah. what we needed. <laughs> okay, yeah, that that does in fairness sound pretty appealing. Yeah. Um, who are your other apart from taking on Madrid? Who are the other main rivals that you guys would have? Um, because I, I've had Zara from, from, men's, on. from men's perspective. Yeah. Um, Recently, we've had a few new clubs opening, but the main arrivals would be Madrid and Valencia. Okay. They would have, yeah, over the years, like it's the, the, the main tournament winners have been between Barcelona, Madrid, and Valencia. Okay. Um, those are probably because obviously they're the biggest cities in the Iberian part of it. Hmm. Uh, so they'd have the most players as well. And they usually have two teams as well. So we'd have the, the Gales team and we'd have the St. Endes team as well. Okay. Uh, so we'd have Madrid have two teams as well and Valencia I think they had two teams as well in some of the tournaments so yeah they'd be our main rivals yeah okay so it's the same for the ladies Danica yeah it's the, it's the same um, in Seville it was um, Marbella and Gibraltar oh, nice. um, and up here now it's more Madrid and Valencia but we have also um, travelled before to Galicia um, oh, yeah. and played against the Galician teams, which is just like a whole other world as well. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I had a the first, second club I had on actually were Zaragoza, um, and they were they we were talking them. about yeah yeah they were talking about rivalries. They mentioned I think you guys came into the the chat somewhere. I don't remember exactly whether they were criticizing you or high fiving you or what they were, but yeah, your name's definitely came Probably up. Probably the uh, former. <laughs> actually, they were great ones, Lazo and Zaragoza. Are they? Yet? Yeah, they have, have the you? they have they have a typical outlet now who would sell you raffle tickets, so they're sorted for their fundraising events. Who's the outlet? I don't know his name now, but I. He's he he just like this perpetually drunk table. man. Okay, okay. Up at the tables after after the night out and smoking fags and the whole lot. Okay, is the uh, does yeah. the rivalry kind of stop on the on the pitch and is it good crack afterwards generally or? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know the way it is in GA, like you know, we're yeah. baiting the shit out of each other on the pitch, and then come 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 the come the celebrations would be hanging around each other and <laughs> in, in, in throwing our arms around each other and everything. Yeah, yeah we sing the songs, yeah, of course. Okay, new best friend. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it sounds oh, like yeah, you, yeah. your proper GA set up going there. Um, I asked all the clubs so far, um, and I suppose since the men's and the ladies' sides, um, Danica, is there a every club has has to have a traditional Irish lunatic on the pitch or off the pitch? Is there uh, one of the ladies' team? Is there a traditional Irish lunatic on the ladies' team? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I can think I can think of ones from my former, my former team, but not in maybe, this current. Maybe it's a traditional lunatic Australian on this team? Maybe in this case, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is there is there one in the men's team, Max? Do you can think of if uh... I, I think the, the ladies' team is probably overshadowed in the, in this uh, aspect. By the okay, men's I think team. so. Okay. We usually have a few every every year. That uh, I don't know. I can't speak from before 2015, but since I'm here, that was six years now. We've had a few characters, all right, over the years. Yeah, that would um, show up, show up, pissed to training, um, things like that. But ah, uh, yeah, I'm not going to name any names here now because. Uh, <laughs> oh wow that's 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 very high bar of you because you're the first club that haven't named any names <laughs> everyone else is like <laughs> let me at them let me at them this is my chance to finally get back at them <laughs> God, you're very very political here very very polite of you yes yeah, not naming any names you know the lads oh, well. the, the lads went straight in and the other teams they were like right i've got a list here as long as my arm i want to here's a shot at the following <laughs> people basically <laughs> that's a they have a few anyway that's the main thing so uh and the ladies yeah. are slightly overshadowed by the sounds of it um danica we'll have to we'll have to recruit a few irish lunatics into the ladies team we do we need a few more tournaments to be able to figure out who is the queen lunatic i think okay yeah, yeah. so when, when COVID goes, <laughs> it's probably down to a lack of a lack of irish ladies on mm. the team as well you know because the whole connection with Irish people in lunacy, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should we do have, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I had the guys in uh, the guys in Philadelphia on um a little while ago and uh, their recruitment policy is quite similar to a few others. They're gonna stand at the airport arrivals terminal with a sign and they're a hurling club. So they're gonna stand there with a sign and a hurl and a beer 
uh, and just anyone who turns up who is willing to take part, just you know, exchange a plane ticket home for a hurl and a beer. So maybe you guys could do the same for the ladies, meet them at the airport and grab them off the plane. That could be a, your best recruitment policy at the moment. So we'll check the arrivals from Dublin. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there'll be too, too many at the moment, to be honest. You might have to wait until, uh, until the summertime for that. So, uh, um, the, the, the other few bits I have, uh, Max, I'll, I'll throw this into you first. Maybe, um, is there a county in Ireland that you would most like a shot at the men's team at Barcelona? A county, as in like playing playing yeah. against a county team. Yep. Who would, you, who would you most like a shot at? Crow Park on Ireland final day, Barcelona versus who? Ah, uh, I I'd love to play the Dubs, but she's we get slaughtered. <laughs> uh, what team, what county do you think you might have a shot against? Wicklow. <laughs> right, okay. Wicklow oh, or. Or maybe Leash. I don't know. Leash, yeah, Leash, maybe. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, my brother-in-law and sister, uh, sister, um, sister-in-law. Sorry, it's down in Leash. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe Leash. Yeah, I definitely say so. Yeah, Danica, have you, um, come across many of the? Have you watched much GA online, or have you been to any games? Have you ever been in Ireland to see any? I've never been to Ireland. Uh, surprisingly, um, I think if I do, to feel a bit like going home uh, at this point yeah. with all the Irish people that I hang around. Mm. Um, I watch games only when there's like a final or something and I'm at the pub and it happens okay. to be on the TV. I'll be okay. honest with you. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Is there, a, is there a standout player or players that you've ever come across that you think, yeah, we'd, we'd like them on our on our team? Oh. Um, Ty Kennelly. Hey? Ty Kennelly. Well, yes, I was actually, I was actually going to say uh, female. I would say Cora, Cora Staunton. Her name Cora Staunton is? from Mayo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she plays. She plays in the AFL now. My yeah. God, she is like one tough bitch. Like I would love to yeah. have her on my team. Jesus. Yeah. yeah she, <laughs> she runs pretty, with her elbow right. like this, yeah. just like. <laughs> yeah. No. No offense to her, but she used to do the same when she was playing Gaelic football here in Ireland as well. So, <laughs> I've I've seen her do that a few times. Yeah. She um, she's. So very still highly regarded over here as well. Like even though she's whatever late thirties, she's still. No, she's like forty now. She's she, like forty yeah, something. But she forty she's something. She's amazing. Like the the career, it's crazy. Yeah, she's definitely. I'd say if you combine the scores that she has in her career in Gaelic football, she's probably ahead of like the next five or six people combined. Um, I saw her play a couple of games before where she scored like three something and four something in a game. So, um, yeah, she's very highly regarded. I know she got on the. AFLW team of the year I think this year a few weeks ago as well so um oh yeah wouldn't yeah. surprise me <laughs> yeah I had um one of my first guests actually was a uh, Ailish Considine uh from the Adelaide Crows team and she's a, a former Clare footballer as well so she was also talking quite highly of uh some of the players at their all or Dwyer of course is now a, a winner an AFL winner with uh Brisbane as well so yeah Irish Irish are pretty rocking it out in Australia in fairness so um, Definitely. Yeah, most of them are. Anyway. The, Ty Canelli is has the luxury had the luxury of just being able to say, "I'll go home to Kerry, I'll win the All Ireland, and then I'll come back out." I'll come back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and most, he did it, and he did it. Yeah, yeah. Most, yeah, yeah. most of that took him home. Kind of go, I'll come home and play a match or two and see if I get anywhere. He just came home and now it's great. I'll just win the All Ireland, then I'll be back out in a year. It's fine. <clears throat> that so that was that, a classic moment that, that when I think it was it was Cork that year in the All Ireland final, and the first. 10 seconds that match Ty Canelli went in the ball was thrown in and he just went for Pierce O'Neill and he got booked straight away and that just set the tone for the match then yeah that was a ridiculous moment yeah yeah standard was that uh, that match? standard AFL moment though going up you know and taking the man instead of the exactly, ball to yeah. Start. so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's a, a prob- typical GA thing as well you know you can't get sent off that early in a match and it, no matter what you do it doesn't the ref is not going to send you off so, <laughs> not at the throw-in. He might send you off before the throw-in, which I've seen happen here in a in a county game a few times. Actually, uh, club games down here. So, um, have you, uh, Max? Have you introduced uh, Danica and others to Father Ted? I ask every club. Um, I don't know actually. No, Danica, do you know about Father Ted? It's mad that you say that now actually, because I watched an episode of it last night there. Um, <laughs> but okay. that'd be a good fundraiser. We could do a Father Ted quiz or something like that. Well, yeah, I'd remind for that. Yeah. <laughs> it's the greatest TV what? show ever made. <clears throat> okay, I'll take yeah. your word of it. <laughs> yeah, it's basically a, a piece a take of the Catholic Church, and it wasn't aired on RT One back in the. It was made back in the nineties. Yeah, it's just three priests living on an island and taking the piss out of the Catholic Church, basically. Yeah. It's, it's the funniest thing. Brilliant. 
the funniest thing that was ever made ever yeah if you're ever doing a father ted quiz yeah let me know because uh that's my speciality in life is father ted so uh, I'll, I'll definitely be up for that father if, ted. yeah yeah no <laughs> i'll definitely be out for that if you're uh i'll turn up in barcelona for that probably so um the <laughs> the last couple of questions then there's a few um uh, for every club i've done uh themed kind of ones based on where they are so there's a few spanish themed uh, questions at the end quick fire ones don't worry it's not a history uh you know quiz or anything you you won't be on the spot too much don't worry um but i have to ask him um, max who the, the greatest ga player ever has been in your lifetime that you would say the greatest ga player ever in my life um uh, yeah. like, idle wise i'd have to say daryl shea nice daryl shea he, he was i looked up to him when i was growing up in Kerry, and i tried to base my game around the way he plays fielding high balls and, and just being a general well, trying to be a general beast on the pitch. Yeah. So uh, definitely, he's, he was my idol when I was growing up, yeah. Deadly, yeah. So my first episode I did, actually, this was a history one. It was on uh, it was on Pody and... I yeah, was listening was, to that. I actually yeah. did it, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I love. Big, big, yeah. I suppose the, the podcast title comes from Pody himself as well. So Pody O'Shea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Danica, is there any, uh, any GA players that have stood out in your... Apart from, I suppose, Ty Canelli is going to be the answer here again, isn't it? <clears throat> It's the only one. I mean, who, what other options are there? You know? there, there are no. <laughs> Has to be yeah. flag. Has yeah, to be. Yeah. <laughs> did uh, did you go to many? Uh, would you have played AFL when you were out in Australia? No, I definitely didn't play. It's, I would okay. probably get absolutely crushed. Um, my brother played a bit, but I did go to a lot of games when I was living there. Um, went up to Sydney on the weekends to see games and stuff. I absolutely loved it. So okay. I do. I do miss it quite a lot. Yeah, so it's good. The Irish TV channels here now started to show it, which is great. And started showing the women's games as well, which is um, which is brilliant. I'm a big, uh, I'm a Crows fan. Uh, my jersey is actually, oh, okay. it's in school at the moment. I left it in my classroom, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a Crows fan. So uh, I don't have any time for these Sydney Swan, you know, people think they're great. You know, these Sydney Swan lads think they're, think they're the best, you know, and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I was, I was lucky. The first thing I did when I, when I landed in Adelaide was my uncle handed me a season ticket to the Oval and I got to go watch, um, I got to see them play the West Coast Eagles and uh, got to see mm-hmm. one of the, one of the greats, Nick Natanui, who I was a, a massive fan of at the time. He was such a, an animal of a guy and uh, it was yeah. nice, to see, nice to see him in the flesh. Um, I probably would argue, I suppose, since we're talking GA as well, Max, who's been at home in GA and Kerry and all that as well, used to abuse from the stands. But I would argue that AFL, the best abuser I ever heard of a referee was a, an 88-year-old woman who sat beside me at the Adelaide Crows game. Uh, she took abuse to a whole new level. You would be jailed in Ireland for some of the things that she shouted at the referee. <laughs> um, like at one stage, she stood up and she was asking for his head on a plate. Um and nobody was batting an eyelid, so I'm guessing abuse, Danica, is, is okay in the stands in AFL, is it? I mean, it's all it's all a bit of fun, isn't it? I mean, nobody takes anyone seriously. Um, I mean, there's an Australian saying that you call your mates the C word and you call the C word your uh, mate. So <laughs> it's all okay. a bit of fun. And you can see, like... I mean, in a, if you go to a Spanish football game here, for example, like the fans of the op- opposition team are behind a big glass cage and they would never sit with the fans of the home team. But if you go to an AFL game, it's all pretty mixed together and you can see a fan of the opposition team standing up and yelling stuff out and you'll kind of yell at him to sit down or whatever, but, you know, it doesn't get violent or anything like that. <laughs> um, and it's pretty common to even go along to a to a football game where you're wearing the shirt of a third team or whatever team you support that's not actually playing on the day, you'll just wear your shirt because you just want to show everyone that you support a different team. Okay, yeah, we have a few like that in Ireland, I suppose, as well, people who just turn up to, to games. There's one famous one, uh, Max would know him, Danica is Mick McDonough is his name. He's a, he's a guy from a county called Offaly nearby and he just turns up to every game in the same jersey he's worn for about the last 40 years, regardless of regardless of who's playing. So, yeah, I kind of get the, the yeah. other random jersey thing. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of uh, last things I want to throw to you guys and then um, I'll let you go. I'll, I won't take up too much of your evening. Um, there's a couple of Spanish-themed questions, but uh, I might alter them as I go along based on where Max is from and where Danica we are from as well. So, um, <clears throat> first and the last, Max, I'll throw to you first. Uh, you have a choice to in a Rafael Nadal uh, or David Clifford. Ah, come on, I have to go with David Clifford. Okay, uh, right. Okay, not going for Nadal then. Um, no. 
Okay. Uh, Danica, would you choose between uh, Enrique Iglesias uh, or would I go Westlife? We could go with Brian McFadden, maybe. Oh, but God. I mean, <laughs> oh, dear God. oh no, I love oh. me some cheesy boy band music, so yeah, yeah. I, do, I do as well. well I just get don't like Brian Sparky. McFadden. Sparky yeah. will help you out with that. Oh. <laughs> I just don't like Brian McFadden, <laughs> that's the only thing. I, I don't mind Westlife at all. I've, I've been to Westlife, my wife is a huge Westlife fan, so uh, but Brian McFadden is just he's, he's a gobshite, is the only word that I can think of for it. Um, to use a, a, good, a good Irish term, um. I'll ask the two of you this one, I suppose. Uh, Max, I'll ask your version of it, which would be uh, Barcelona or Bally Bunyan? Barcelona. Barcelona, okay. Too uh, many bad memories of Monday Night Madness in Bally Bunyan. Okay, we'll take that. And uh, Danica, would you For choose... For lack uh, of memories. For lack of memories, yeah. Uh, Danica, Barcelona or Bondi? That's a tough one. Um, <laughs> I mean, beaches in Bondi are better. Than, than Barcelona. Um, the okay. beaches in Barcelona are just like dirty sand and lots okay. of robbers. Yeah. Um, but Barcelona is um, cheaper and less pretentious. Okay. So I'm going to say Barcelona on this one. I can I can just go somewhere else to go to the beach. <laughs> nice. Yeah, good answer. Take that one, yeah. Um, Max, uh, Lionel Messi or Daro Shea? Uh, Daro Dar- Shea. A lot of respect <laughs> for Leo as well, but... That was my hero growing up, so. Okay. Uh, Danica, Le- Lionel Messi or Ty Canelli? <laughs> Can I go for a third option? <laughs> yeah, sure. Who's the third option? I mean, I mean, I'm not a Barcelona supporter, so. <laughs> okay. Um, Joaquin. Okay. Joaquin Sanchez. From Atletico. Betis. Oh, yeah. Even, Are you a Betis fan, are you? Yeah, I'm a mad okay. Betis fan. How did that mm-hmm. come about? I would have followed them back in the day when, like, De Nielsen was playing with Batiste. I mean, so if you're Irish, it's the only option. It's the team that you have to follow in Spain. So it's the only choice. <laughs> really? Wow, okay. Uh, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't realize. Why, why is that? A <laughs> couple of reasons. Um, the only time we ever won the uh, Spanish League back in the 1930s was with an Irish coach, um, Paddy O'Connor. O'Con- O'Connell? O'Connell? Oh. Pariana, who also coached Barcelona after that. Uh, and also because our shirt is green and white. Green and white, yeah. um, Which was actually at the time copied off Celtic. Okay. I didn't know that either. That's there you it. go. I love all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I love random like facts and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, yeah, um, I would have loved um, De Nielsen back in the 90s. One of their great wingers, a Brazilian. I, w- I would have mm-hmm. loved him. Um and yeah, I'm trying to think who else you've put me on the spot now, Batiste. I used to know my footballers from the 90s inside out, but um, Batiste, I know my mates are probably listening to this, are probably going to be shouting at it, uh, listing players <laughs> off my heart. But um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the wrong teams here. I, I have Deportivo on my head, um, which is not, not who I'm thinking of. Who's Batiste's star? You can name with? a few and you can tell me who's okay. who normally starts with this. Okay, so Joaquin, obviously. Um, yep. We have. Guardado, Andres Guardado, oh, yeah. the Mexican captain. Is he still um, playing? Yeah, yeah, he's still there. Oh, Fik- 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 Nabil Fik- French yeah. guy. Yeah. Sergio Canales plays yeah. now for the uh, Spanish national team as well. He's very, very good. A um, few former Barcelona players as well. Deo, Badra, Mark Badra, he played Mark for Bartra, yeah. Dortmund yeah. there for a while. Um, yeah, a few good players lining up for, for Betis these days. So awesome, it's, not, yeah. it's not bad. I didn't know that's where Mr. Fekir ended up because he was destined for Liverpool, I think, at one stage, um, if I remember correctly. And he yeah. ended up at Batiste. So, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that was probably a better move, in fairness, going to Batiste. I would never recommend anyone to go to Liverpool. So, yeah, good, good idea. Uh, Much nicer place to live. Much nicer place to live, Seville. Yeah. <laughs> Have you, uh, do you follow, while, I, while I'm asking, Danica, do you follow any other soccer teams other than the, the Batiste in Spain? Um, not really, but this is my number one. When I was growing up as a kid, I followed the Wollong- the mighty Wollongong Wolves uh, yeah. in the National Soccer League <laughs> in Australia, but they're no longer in the National Soccer League. So, I mean, if I watch the A League, I'll follow Sydney, um, yeah. just because it's the closest team by default. But if there are ever another Wollongong team in the National League, then that's who I would follow. Um, I mean, I watch English football, but I don't have like a specific team that I follow. I just don't really like Chelsea and I don't really like Manchester City. That's it. 
That's okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a Man United fan. I don't like them either. So. Okay, we'll, we'll be fine then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we're safe enough there. Um, uh, the last few have then uh, Max. Uh, you can choose between a uh, paella or paella, depending on where what part of Ireland you come from, and uh, Irish stew. Ah, uh, definitely a paella. Yeah, that's funny. There's our yeah, that's were the yeah, same, especially as well. with the weather out here now. You know, the Irish stew is just for something for cold in the winter. Yeah, so I'd okay. have to go with paella, and I've recently discovered how to make it properly as well. So. The giant pan that's about that wide and <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. yeah okay so it's good danica would you be in the same or i mean i don't think we've eaten irish stew before so i can't answer that one but i mean i do love myself a good paella with um seafood in it okay what about paella Nothing or better. an aussie barbecue oh okay that's a <laughs> that's a different story that's a different story i mean you have not lived until you have eaten a bit of fried pineapple on the barbecue and a lamb chop. Okay. So I've got to go for the Australian barbecue for sure. Okay, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that one. So um, Max, this one's maybe slightly, well, maybe not, uh, I suppose maybe both of you could go with this one, but Max, um, you can choose between bullfighting in Pamplona or general fighting outside Copper's nightclub in Dublin. <laughs> Uh, well, I've been involved in only one of those uh, in my lifetime. But, uh, I, and it wasn't the bullfighting. Not, it wasn't the bullfighting, no, no. I'm not a fan of bullfighting myself. I'm uh, So I'd have to say fighting fighting actual people instead of animals outside coppers. Yeah, that's okay. a bit of banter. Yeah. Dare, dare I ask the coppers incident? Uh, well, too, too many to remember. I studied in DCU, so coppers okay. was a... Coppers was a more more or less of a weekly, but I did remember making a pact with myself on numerous times, never going to Coppers again, and always end up breaking it. Yeah, most most people have, I think, in their life. Yes, uh, Danica is yeah, it a yeah, yeah. bull fighting in Pamplona or the general fighting outside of nightclubs in Australia? Oh God, well, I mean, I can't say bullfighting, can I? So it's going to be the other one. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's not a good choice either way, to be honest. Yeah, although Max, no, pretty, it's, it's Max better of the two, two evils. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Max seemed fairly it's happy. Banned with here in Catalonia, so. yeah. So it oh, is, is banned it? here, yeah. Okay, yeah. Here in okay, fair enough. Um, and then the last one, yeah. Uh, I suppose I could I could alter this one slightly as well. Um, Danica, you can choose between. I'll give you three. I'll give both of you the three. You could choose between sangria, Guinness, or Fosters. I've never tried Fosters before. I've never Actual tried. One. Not every Australian in the world had tried Fosters. You're from, lucky. From, no, because it's not even Australian. We don't. It's just. It's, it's all marketing. You oh, can't, okay. I literally couldn't tell you where you could buy Fosters in Australia. I worked in a pub um, when I was at uni for like maybe four years. We didn't sell Fosters. Never. I've literally never tried it in my life. What is I the mean, beer? I guess I'm gonna... What is the beer in Australia then? Depends what state you're from. Um, oh, okay. But it's either, so I mean, Queensland, you would be drinking Forex. Um Victoria, you'd be drinking VB, and New South Wales, you'd be drinking either Tui's New York Carlton Draft. But I think VB is probably the most popular one overall in the whole country. Forex, so I'm going to go with VB. Or Forex. Forex sounds like a tech company or something. I don't know why. It just yeah. Sounds, it sounds like a beer straight away. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you can choose between your Australian beer, your Sangria, or your Guinness, which are you going to go with? Probably my Australian beer, I okay. would say. Awesome. A nice yeah. light lager. <laughs> okay, sounds good. And Max, you, uh, I'm going to uh, stick with I'm the Guinness. Gonna, I'm definitely here. going to say Guinness, but uh, it has to be said, the Guinness at home, if it's the Guinness at home, I choose Guinness. Yeah. And if it's not, if it's the Guinness over here, especially if anyone here who works in the Michael Collins is listening, start out your pouring at the pints of Guinness in there. I remember numerous occasions giving out about it. And uh, yeah, well, you know, it's just one of those things like people don't like when you, when you say, no, that's a shite pint. Like people don't yeah. like being told that. You know, I just okay, just sort it out and give me another one. And whenever yeah, you go should, outside Ireland, yeah. you just forget about the 119 and three quarter second rule of, of having to let the pine settle. Like. So that doesn't exist over here. So wow. anyone from uh, Michael Collins listening, sort that out, will you? Okay, yeah. I was gonna say you have like the perfect, you know, even expert down the, the bottom of the screen here. Uh, Danica has a uh, plenty of experience. She could, you know, maybe teach them in the bar thing or two as well. I do actually know how to pour a pint of Guinness. That's one thing that I did learn in the pub. So maybe they should get me behind the bar at the Michael Collins yeah. and I'll, I'll show them how it's done. Yeah, three, <laughs> three points for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, we do get the Gales rate in there. So if you're if you ah. play for the Barcelona Gales, if you're a member, so look, all the complaining I've done, I can't really complain because they do treat us well. And uh, 
you get a slight discount off a pint, even if it is only 50 cents. But <laughs> oh, that's look, so we'll take it. Anybody I know going to Barcelona now are going to say, right, you need to find the Michael Collins pub and tell them you play for Barcelona and you'll be granted. <laughs> that's, that's, going, that's going to be the key for now on. Send off a pint. Yeah. yeah. Um, the last couple if of you drink teams, 10 though, pints, that's a free pint. <laughs> buy, buy 10, get one free. Yeah. Yeah, sounds like the job, yeah. Um, the last last couple of things I'll ask you then, uh, Danica, what's the hope for Barcelona Gales going forward then in the next couple of months? Yeah, I mean, signs are looking good um, just in general. I mean, the vaccination is starting to ramp up. They're finally right. letting us travel between provinces and also they're getting rid of the curfew. Um, the numbers are pretty good, both in the training and in the after training beers, which is the most important thing. So um, I'm hoping that we'll at least get a few sort of local games against a couple of the other teams here in, in, in Barcelona and in Sitges as well, at least on the, on the men's side. Um, and I think that next year we should probably see the tournaments return. That's what I think anyway. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> That's what we're hoping for, yeah, because we were really unlucky there. We got The wind was taken out of our sails. We were going so well before the pandemic. You know, we'd, mm. I'd won my first tournament since I'm here. The, the one before that was 2013. So mm. it was the first tournament in seven years. And oh. we were going well. We had the numbers of training. We had really good players. Yeah. And there was effort being put in from everybody. And then we only had one tournament that year. We usually have three. Uh, I reckon we could have won all of them with the with the team that we had. And you know, the good news is like we're still going strong now. Even mm. though I said I, I wasn't at training, like a lot, of, everyone is still involved from even the social aspect. You know, the hunger is there for getting out to get back playing and get, and mm. going to tournaments again. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that can be taken as a positive. You know, we're 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 hopeful for the future, definitely. Mm. Um, from my aspect, the, from what the team has has developed over the last few years. Uh, it's it's definitely just been improving and improving every year, and that goes that goes down to the work that the lads are putting on the committee are putting in. You know the mm. and the pe the people even before that who've set up the club over the, when I was there, uh, the likes of Mark McCord, Jerry Kelly, Jimmy Coyle, uh, and uh, Rochelle even that were and Martin, all of all of the committee they've done a great job and it's it's also apart from the football part because I was delighted when I moved over here being able to play football like I didn't even know. Um, apart from that, you know, the Bar Barca, Barca slogan is Mezco and Club, which is more than one club. So we also organize social events and we try to do cultural things. I um, don't know if you've heard of the Spring Onion Parties. Is that a... it's called. Is that a Carlo thing, no? Uh, <laughs> yeah, every, <laughs> no, every spring... Um, it's mad. The, the, the Catalan tradition of having these spring onion parties is um, you, you just basically have a barbecue with your mates. But uh, we, we've run one now every year for the last couple of years, and it's basically just a glorified drinking fest. We, 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 we try to make it sound all sophisticated and we're culturally um, Black toy involved, event. getting everyone involved. And, and uh, we have one, la one local lad, Carlos the, Car Carlos the, Car the Calsoc cooking Catalan. We have him uh, cooking it all for us. Uh, and we just go out and it's an excuse to go drinking early and uh, doing some Catalan culture things, you know. Yeah. Course, yeah. I think especially now as well, like during the, the pandemic, the, the club has been quite a comfort for a lot of people. I know it has for me because when you're just week after week at home all day, working at home, by the time you finish, everything's closed. You can't really go out. You can't do anything or see anyone. Just knowing that every single Sunday, week after week, you're going to turn up, you're going to see people you know, you're going to have a chat with friends, you're going to be out in the fresh air. It's it's something to always look forward to. And, like, to be honest, it means so much more to go to training than have a drink after now than I think it ever did. So yeah, I'm really like, grateful to the club for that. Yeah, so onwards and upwards, it sounds like, um, for you guys. Yeah. Although you still have the tag of Champions of Spain, as you've called it, which is uh, which is nice. So um, you can't, nobody can take that off you until another tournament. So uh Maybe you should let it drag out for another while and just, you know, get the mileage out of it uh, when COVID is over. So um, <laughs> the last thing then, is there, um, is there anywhere that people can buy your jerseys on O'Neill's or do we have to go to Barcelona to Michael Collins pub and rob them out of his hands or where, where can you buy your gear? Oh, you can buy it on the O'Neill's on, on the O'Neill's website. Okay. Yeah, Lovely. Yeah, That's you good. can. We'll put it up there. Yeah, so A and, uh, range of quality gear available. Lovely. That's that's good. Good advertising from a, a carry man, anyway. Yes, uh, that was Michael Healy. <laughs> Michael Healy Ray advertising at its finest. There, yeah. <laughs> Something you might hear in North Dublin down a dark alley as well. 
Yeah, probably, yeah. Uh, no, that's good, yeah. No, I'll stick that up as well with it. Um, is there anyone, Danica, you want to give a shout-out to or hello before, uh, before I let you guys go? Um, yeah, oh. to the Gaylets, the wonderful Gaylets, especially the ones that have hung around. Um, Eva, Kate, Kira, Andrea, love them and grateful for them. Awesome. <laughs> and Ola and, as well. And, Can't forget Ola. And Ty Canelli. <clears throat> And Ty Canelli and Joaquin. <laughs> okay, and Joaquin. Okay, cool. Max, is there anyone in Caris uh, I'd have to. I'd have to definitely say hello to my mammy. And if they're if you're listening to this, send us out an old uh, six pack of potatoes because I'm running low. <laughs> You'll have to put up. I'll have to put up the uh, the call out because uh, poor uh, Charlie, who's out in Saigon in Vietnam, um, she was on the chat yesterday, and she was absolutely dying for my wadi and black pudding and crisps basically and chocolate so i i tagged my wadi and i tagged the black pudding companies and everyone in the instagram post so i'm <laughs> just for the crack i want to see if they left to do it because uh she's looking for about five liters of my wadi if anyone listen out there there's a couple of liters of my wadi spare she's looking for some uh some, uh, you can make that last if you're if you're going to your bad patch you can make five liters of my, my wadi you can definitely make that last a while yeah that could last for six months probably yeah um yeah, no, lads, look, thanks so much for coming on. I, I really appreciate it. It was great crack. It's brilliant talking no, to somebody. Thanks for having us, Jason. Yeah. yeah. And so, thank you. Great stuff for play to you with the, with the podcast. And uh, yeah. hopefully it goes well for you in the future. Yeah, well, look, it's the likes of you guys that make it. So, um, yeah, no, it's just great to talk to people outside of uh, the same country as well. It's even more interesting. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but um, I'll let you guys go good and uh, have, a, have, have a good evening. And hopefully I'll be out to Barcelona sometime soon when things ease down. I'll... Yeah, you're more, you're more than welcome. Bring the bring the boots. and sure we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll have a spare pair of shorts for you. Lovely, yeah. I'll bring, I'll bring, ta- I'll bring potato, yeah. potato crisps as well. Don't worry. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And for anyone else out there listening who's uh, who wants to go traveling or who wants to go somewhere else to enjoy a, yeah. a year away or do Erasmus, but come play with the Barcelona Gales. It's an absolutely amazing club, and you'll have an amazing time. And you'll have good weather. You won't have shite pitches. Well, I can't guarantee that actually, but. It won't be muddy anyway. I'll say that much for now. It okay, won't yeah. rain most of the time. <laughs> okay, that's 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 in itself is probably enough. So you, anyone who's listening, you'll recognise Max and Danica. They'll be at the arrivals terminal with two signs, two Gaelic footballs, and a crate of beer, and they'll sign you up there and then. So, exactly. and a T-shirt saying "I shot Jr." <laughs> I shot Jr. And it, Danica, you're really gonna have to watch Father Ted because uh, Max is just throwing out references here that I'm, he's, he's kind of losing. <laughs> it's going straight over my head. Going over your head, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone in Ireland is absolutely who watches Father Ted is wetting themselves now at this stage, which is great. So yeah, um, yeah. But look, let's let you go and have a good evening, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Excellent. Take it Thanks easy. So much. Nice guys. All Take it best. easy. Take See you later. Take care, Slon. 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 Bye. 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 Coming up the next day on the Loaf of Bread GA Global, we cut into our next slice. They had a like a hurling tour, so we went to the Kilkenny Cat Stadium, and like some guy showed us how to hold a hurley. And um, you know, I was interested in it, but similarly to Brian, I was like, oh, I don't think there's anything like that in Philly. And then, um, yeah, a couple years later, uh, coworkers boyfriend was like oh yeah I'm on this team Natorig in Philly and I'm like are you kidding me like we had a hurling team the entire time I say a big thanks to Max and Danica and make our way to our next destination and coming up on Monday next on the Loaf of Bread GA podcast we travel on Slice 17 from Barcelona to the beautiful Philadelphia in the US of A here I meet with Melissa Brian and Tiernan to find out all about Natorig Hurling Club in Philadelphia We chat all about the American take on hurling and camogie, local rivalries, USGA championships, and of course the important choices like Philly man Kevin Hart or Irish legend Chris O'Dowd, Pat Oliveri who created the Philly cheesesteak or Pat McDonough who created Supermax, or the real one, Rocky Balboa or Katie Taylor. That's next Monday morning from 9am as we continue the journey with two slices a week. I'll see you at the arrivals hall, but until then, check out the various clubs on the Instagram page and see all the amazing work they do and some of the nicest GA gear going. Find the podcast on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter and on TikTok. Email loafofbreadpod at gmail.com or just simply hit the follow button and spread the word of the Loaf of Bread GA pod across the globe. Slonagy.